Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson uh, eight five angles of elevation and depression video notes and we're going to talk about that in just a second um, but I want to direct you in your note packet um, in class on block day you finished up or hopefully finished up the application problems for solving triangles and so if you're in your note packet this should be the next page you see we are going to skip this page we are not going to do anything with this page you can X through it you can scribble it I don't care what you do but we are moving right on to the back of that page where it talks about lesson 85 angle of elevation and depression notes now it's going to be kind of tricky to talk about this because um, you guys are probably wondering what I mean by depression. I don't mean feeling sad and, and like all is lost and not feeling happy ever. That's not what I mean at all. I mean depression as the opposite of elevation. Elevation is moving upward. Depression is moving downward. That's all we really mean by depression. And so we're going to talk about what an angle of elevation is, what an angle of depression is. You have the vocab in your book you can use to write down vocabulary in your vocab notebook. But the best way to understand it is a diagram similar to this. Let's say we have a battleship on the water and a fighter jet in the air. The angle formed by the fighter jet's horizontal line of sight and the line of sight down to the battleship is an angle of depression. Anytime you start with a horizontal and you look below that, you are looking or forming rather an angle of depression. So a angle formed with a horizontal and a line of sight below that horizontal is an angle of depression. Now conversely, anyone standing on the deck of the battleship, if they were to look up at the fighter jet, they would be forming an angle of elevation with a horizontal and a line above that horizontal line. So anytime you have to look up, you're forming an angle of elevation. Now, remember, all horizontal lines are parallel. So this 20 degree angle of elevation is congruent to this 20 degree angle of depression. And so we can use things like this to form right triangles. Since we know those angles, we know our trigonometry rules, we can find measurements and do a lot of calculations just with that very little bit of information. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to go through a few examples with you of how to calculate and find values based on angles of elevation or depression. It's just an application of the trigonometry we've been using in the past couple lessons. So here's our first example. Leah wants to see a castle in an amusement park. She sights the top of the castle at an angle of elevation of 38 degrees. And it's kind of tough to see. I'll try and highlight it for you. But she forms an angle of elevation with this horizontal line of sight from where she stands of 38 degrees. Now that forms a right triangle with the actual tower of the castle. The castle she knows is 190 feet tall. So there's 190 feet. If Leah is 5 foot 5, and that's going to be important in just a second, how far is she from the castle to the nearest foot? Now, her line of sight measures to her uh, to her eyes, not to her feet, obviously. She doesn't see from her feet. So this 5 foot 5 is what we have to take away from the 190 feet of the castle. So we want to start, okay, and notice that BC equals 190 minus that 5.5 feet, or 184.5. So we're going to use BC as 184.5. That is the opposite leg of that right triangle. And we want to measure that line of sight from her eyes to the top of the tower, AB. We're looking for AB. That is the hypotenuse of this triangle and since we're using this 38 degree angle and we're using the opposite leg to find the hypotenuse if you remember from so ka toa we are going to use sine because we're using the opposite leg to find the hypotenuse so we're going to set up this equation sine of the 38 degree angle of elevation equals the opposite leg which is 184.5 over the hypotenuse, which we can call AB or we can call X. Makes a lot makes it a lot easier if we just call it X. And then we need to solve that for X. Now you should be catching on by now that to solve these equations we set up a proportion. Put sine of 38 over 1. Cross multiply. We do X times the sine of 38, which equals 
1 times 184.5. And then to get x by itself, we have to cancel out times the sine of 38, so we're going to divide by that value. Remember, sine of 38 is just a value, just a numeric value, just written differently. And so we're going to divide both sides by that. So x equals that ratio, so we're going to go ahead and round that out to the nearest foot, to the nearest whole number. So we're going to do 184.5 divided by sine of 38. And that gives us approximately 299.677. And you realize I didn't round that. I started to write before I looked at where we should have to round. So I went ahead and gave you a few decimals. If I round that to the nearest foot, this is a 6. We have to round this 9 up. Well, that means we're actually rounding 99 up, which means we're rounding 299 up to approximately 300 feet. Okay, so that was an angle of elevation. Now, we have a similar problem we could set up with an angle of depression. I'm going to try and clear up the, the focus on the video, but you can see it a lot better just looking at your own page. So don't worry about trying to read what you see on the video here. I'll tell you what it should be. All right, here's our situation. A search and rescue team is airlifting people from the scene of a boating accident when they observe another person in need of help. If the angle of depression to the other person is 42 degrees and the helicopter is 18 feet above the water, what is the horizontal distance from the rescuers to the person to the nearest foot? Okay, a lot of information, but they give you this lovely picture, so we're going to use that to set this up. Okay, we're using a 42 degree angle of depression formed by this horizontal and the line of sight to the other person. Now, the helicopter is 18 feet above the water. That does not look like a triangle. But remember, this horizontal line of sight from the helicopter is parallel to the horizontal line at the uh, sea level. So we can just take this measurement and move it down to this measurement. Remember, these are parallel, so these alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle C is 42 degrees. So this angle of depression is the same as this angle of elevation from the person's point of view. And we want to find how far apart the rescuer is going to be from the person out in the water here. So we're looking for x from this person back here. That, if I look at a right triangle, is the adjacent leg to this 42 degree angle. And we're using this 18 foot drop, which is the opposite leg. So if I'm using opposite and adjacent, remember back to Sokotoa, we will be using tangent. Okay? So I'm going to use my tangent ratio. I'm going to set up this as the tangent of 42 degrees equals the opposite leg of 18 over the adjacent leg, which is what I'm looking for. The distance horizontally from the rescuer, which is where this person will be when they hit the water, to this other person in the water to the nearest foot. So again, we set up a proportion. I'm going to let you try and solve this one. If you want to uh, give yourself some time to do that, you should pause the video now. All right, hopefully you've clicked play after trying to view this. If not, pause again to make sure you have time to do this. But this is the answer we should get. When you cross multiply, we do x times the tangent of 42 equals 1 times 18. And then we divide both sides by tangent of 42, so x is equal to 18 over tangent of 42, and we divide those out in our calculator, and we get x is about 20 feet. All right, we are actually going to skip over example 3. After looking at that, it is not the best example to illustrate what happens when we have two angles of elevation or depression. So we're going to use this guided practice number 3 as our example 3, and this will be the last example we do in this video. Okay, we've got two buildings are sighted from atop a 20 meter or sorry 200 meter skyscraper building a is sighted at 35 degree angle of depression where building b is sighted at a 36 degree angle of depression how far apart are the two buildings to the nearest meter all right you'll notice we don't have a picture so i'm going to help you draw that out here's what our picture should look like we want the top of a skyscraper to be here okay you can make that drawing as accurate as you want but we just need a point and then we need the level of the other two buildings Okay, this might be the ground level or they might be the same height and so they're spotted, we're going to assume they're spotted along the same horizontal. Building A is sighted at a 35 degree angle of depression, so here's our horizontal that we are measuring our angle of depression from. Building B is sighted at 36, so the greater angle of depression is going to be the closer building and I'll show you why. And these will not be drawn to scale, 
But here is building B at a 36 degree angle of depression. 35 degrees is a little bit less. Okay, once again, not to scale. So this has to be building A because the 35 degree angle is less. All right. And we know that they are sighted from atop a 200 meter skyscraper. So I know this. I know that's a right angle. We want to know how far apart these buildings are. So I'm going to call this bottom of the skyscraper point S. And what I need to be able to find is this distance. Well, in order to find that distance, I have to know this distance and the total distance. If I wanted to come up with different variables, I could, and then just find one at a time and then plug them in. But we have to start with finding y. If I can find y, then I'm going to take that away from my total distance to find x, because this segment is not part of a right triangle. This is only um, a short part of what would be a leg of that bigger right triangle. So if I want to know that value, I need to know this leg of the smaller right triangle to subtract it from that total length. So these are the two things I'm going to find first. I'm going to find this leg of the bigger right triangle and then this leg of the smaller and then I'll subtract the two. X equals Z minus Y. Okay, so here's how we do this. We're going to use trigonometry to first find Z and then we will find y. Now, you have to be careful. These angles of depression um, aren't angles of the triangles. But remember, if this is 36 degrees, then this is 36 degrees. And if this is 35, then this is 35 degrees. And so I can use these angles instead of the two up the top. So first, I'm going to find this length from A to S, length Z, by using this leg, which is opposite, and then this leg, which is what I'm looking for, which would be adjacent. So if I'm using opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use tangent. Remember, soka toa. All right, so we're going to say that the tangent of 35 degrees equals the opposite leg 200 over the adjacent leg, we've called that side Z. So we need to solve that for Z. By now you guys should be a little more familiar with solving for Z, so I'll let you go ahead and do that, and then uh, continue watching the video to see what we get. All right, if you need more time, pause the video. Otherwise, this is what we should get for Z. Okay, this total length is about 285.63, and then we're measuring in meters. So that's in meters. And I'll round that off a little bit differently next time, because they went to the nearest meter. But since I'm not using this as a final answer, I wanted to give a little bit more detail. Now I need to find the value of y. y is also an adjacent leg of this smaller triangle, so I'm going to use the same setup, only with 36 degrees. The tangent of 36 degrees equals 200 over y. We can still solve this the same way that we did the other one, and since we're using the same thing, y, I'm going to jump down here, would be 200 divided by the tangent of 36. And so we can use that calculation and get y is approximately 275.28 meters. And so since x, that amount we're looking for, is the difference between these two segments, I just need to subtract those. So if I did 285.63 minus 275.28, I should get that x equals about 10 meters. All right, so we actually get about 10.35, and so we round that to the nearest meter. It's about 10 meters. So these buildings are about 10 meters apart, so they're really close to each other. Um, but that's why these angles of uh, depression are so much smaller. All right, and that finishes up our notes for um, less than 8.5 angles of elevation and depression. Uh, hopefully this has been a, a good resource for you. You'll have a worksheet over this to work on, um, but you'll get that in class on Friday.